Hi, I'm Stuart Barker, the ISO 27001 Ninja. And in this particular blogging guide, we're going to have a look at the information security policy for ISO 27001, the 2022 updated edition. So we're going to have a look through the policy. I'm going to show you either A, if you've downloaded the template, what the template involves, what each of the elements are. And if you haven't bought the template and you're interested in typing, then I'm going to go through it slowly so you can copy it in your own time. For, for less than the price of a mochaccino, you can go. In fact, this one you can buy for a pound. <laughs> right. So the information security policy for ISO 27001 2022. What we do is we remember that policies are statements of what we do. They're not statements of how we do it. How we do it is covered in process documents. So all of our policies are statements of what we do. When we look at the 2022 version of the standard, it has introduced the concept and a concept that actually I've been using for a very, very long time of topic specific policies. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a headline policy, the information security policy, this policy, and then we're going to have a series of topic specific policies. I'm going to cover those uh, in blogs and guides as we go as well to show you and, and do a deep dive. And again, you can either download the template or you can pause the video and copy and paste and write it in your own time. So the information security policy at a high level. Every policy that you see as we go through it has on it this um, version control. And we have document classification and we have last review date and we have document owner. We also then have our version control table. I'm not going to cover that in this video. I will cover it because it's going to apply to around about 25 topic specific policies. I am going to do a video on that. So have a look at that uh, if you need to. The information security policy itself is going to cover a number of areas. It's going to have purpose, scope, principle. We're going to introduce the concept of a chief exec statement, introduction, we're going to look at objectives, information security defined, and information security policy framework. We're going to have information security roles and responsibilities, monitoring legal and regulatory obligations, training and awareness, a continual improvement. And then again, on the footer of every policy, we have policy compliance. Again, I'm not going to cover it in detail here. I'll do another video on it where we do compliance measurement, exceptions, non-compliance, continual improvement. And actually every policy that I provided has a mapping to the standard and the clauses and Annex A controls to which this may apply. So let's have a look and dig, dig deeper into this information security policy. So the purpose, the purpose of this policy is to set out the information security policies that apply to the organization to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of data. And the scope is all employees and third party users. And again, if you were changing it, you could change the wording on that. What we're articulating here is it's uh, employees of the organization, but also other organization, uh, sorry, other people that work with us, for us, alongside us. So that could be contractors, that could be consultants, that could be uh, suppliers. So the scope of this policy applies to all of those. The principle, the principle on which this is based is information security is managed based on risk, legal and regulatory requirement and business need. So we've touched on a number of videos that ISO 27001 is a risk based standard, not a rule based standard. As a risk based standard, we are managing our information security based on risk. So the risk that it presents to us. We're also acknowledging the fact that we are reliant and obliged by the law and regulation and obviously uh, defined by business need as well. Now, this statement here, we have a chief executive statement and commitment. I am going to read it, but the concept is, is as a leadership uh, top down standard, we're demonstrating leadership commitment in a number of different areas and it is one of the specific clauses. So this is one of the ones that we're going to call out. So we have our chief executive statement of commitment. Now, you can use this. Just know that if you do use this, this is a template and it is used many, many times. Right. So it may well be that an auditor that you come across goes, hang on a minute, I've seen this before. So you might want to change the wording slightly. So let me give you the concept. Let me give you the understanding. And then if you need to tweak it, you can tweak it. Right. So we're looking at a statement from our chief exec, the most senior person within our organization. In this particular one, we're saying as a company, information processing is fundamental to our success 
and the protection and, in, and security of that information is a board level priority. So we're showing that commitment. Whether it is employee information or customer information, we take our obligations under. Now here we reference the GDPR and Data Protection Act seriously, but obviously you may have regulations and laws that are specific to where you are. So put those in, right? Don't just copy and paste and go with mine blindly. Use your own data protection law. But we're making a reference to it and we're saying, yeah, we take our obligations under the law seriously. And we're saying that we have provided the resources to develop and implement and continually improve the information security management system appropriate to our business. So we're showing and we're demonstrating the commitment. Now, what we would do here is we would put the name of the chief exec. We would put the date that we believe that they made the statement. And then we put some kind of signature potentially uh, if we needed to in there. So we're just demonstrating commitment. We then provide an introduction. In our introduction, we're saying information security protects the information that is entrusted to us. Getting information security wrong can have significant adverse impacts on our employees, our customers, our reputation and our finances. By having an effective and affecting information security management system, we can provide assurances for our legal, regulatory and contractual obligations. We can ensure the right people have the right access to the right data at the right time. We can provide protection of personal data as defined by the GDPR or your appropriate legal and regulatory uh, frameworks. And we can be good data citizens and custodians. The next section is we are looking at objectives. Now, each of these is covered in the standard. It's a requirement that we have them in our policy, um, but also a good practice. So if you're wondering where it came from, it came from there. Information security objectives. To ensure the confidentiality, integrity and availability of organisation information, including all personal data as defined by the GDPR, data protection uh, appropriate framework for you, based on good risk management, legal, regulatory and contractual obligations and business need. Our next objective is to provide the resources required to develop, implement and continually improve the information security management system. To effectively manage third party suppliers who process, store or transmit information to reduce and manage information security risks, securing our supply chain to implement a culture of information security and data protection through effective training and awareness. Now, these are objectives that I have used many, many times, right? And they may not be 100% appropriate to you, but if this is your first build, if this is your first implement, then I would suggest that they probably are gonna be relevant to you. When it comes to information security objectives, there are other documents that we have. We have an information security management system document that sets out the framework for setting our objectives. If you have purchased the toolkit, or if you look on my YouTube, or you read my other blogs, there is guides and information and the template for you on the framework, how you set it, what the process is. So if those aren't appropriate to you, or you wanna know how we came up with them, then please look at that. There are also supporting documents we have a supporting information security objectives document that sets out our information security objectives. So we're having a slight segue here to look at other things that can help and support us. Uh, as you would expect, this is a template provided as part of the toolkit. But what we need to do as part of the standard, again, taking that segue, when it comes to information security objectives, we need to set what the objective is, what will be, be done, what resources will be required, who will be responsible, when will it be completed and how are the results evaluated. So we have supporting documentation that goes along with our information security objectives. Now, clearly the objectives in the objective spreadsheet should match the objectives within your policy. OK, make sure that they tie up. That can be a bit of a foobar, right? I mean, I've seen that happen where people write different objectives in different documents. Coming back to the information security policy, though, we we define information security 
The definition of information security is a standard definition, but we are going to record it uh, and we're going to document it. And it's about the confidentiality, integrity and availability of data. That is access to information is to those with appropriate authority, the right people with the right access. Integrity is information is complete and accurate. So the right people with right access to the right data and availability is information is available when needed the right people with the right access to the right data at the right time. So that's information security defined. We then set out our information security policy framework. So as we've said, we have a topic specific policy. You can see that here. We have this high level, sorry, we have this high level policy, then we have topic specific policies. The topic specific policies are provided as part of the toolkit. We are going to go through each of them. We are going to do a deep dive, show you them. Um, but the way that you would generate that here is if you've got all of the policies, then clearly you're going to list them. If through your implementation, you don't have specific controls, then you don't have the control. You don't need the policy. Then you can remove that from this framework. But we are communicating in our information security policy all of the policies that are relevant uh, to us that people are signing up to, uh, acknowledging, are reading uh, on an annual basis. We then have our information security roles and responsibilities. In our policy, we set out that information security is the responsibility of everyone to understand and adhere to the policies, follow processes and report suspected or actual breaches. Specific roles and responsibilities for the running of the information security management uh, system are defined and recorded in the information security roles assigned and responsibilities document. Now, what we're doing is we're making our policy as effective, as efficient, as streamlined as we can. We don't want to pad this out. Um, we don't want to create a document that is, uh, is unwieldy. So we are calling out to other documents. In this one, we're talking about the information security assigned roles and responsibilities. Let's take a slight segue and have a look at that document. Our information security roles and assigned uh, roles assigned and responsibilities document is just a list of the roles that we have that make up our management system. It talks to the structure of our information security uh, management. It talks to then um, individual roles and it allocates people to roles. So it's a very simple document, really. We would put the names of people in here. We would assign uh, deputies to, peop uh, to roles. Uh, but what it also does is it gives you, if you didn't know what the roles were, it gives you what their accountabilities, what their responsibilities are. So it goes through. This isn't a deep dive on that particular document. I'm just showing you it as a call out. Back to the information security policy. So we have those roles and responsibilities. We've got our commitment in our policy and we have our document that's further defined. Monitoring. Our policy sets out that compliance with policies and procedures of the information security management system are monitored via the management review team, together with independent reviews by both internal and external audit on a periodic basis. So we have our policies, but how do we monitor those? So we monitor those through the concept of a management review team. Our management review team is our oversight body. It has specific responsibilities documented in the roles and responsibilities document. And we cover that on other blogs and we cover that on other videos. So if that's a concept you want to go through, uh, go, go into, then call out to that. But just know for now that the management review team monitors adherence to them. The actual the management review team actually signs off policies as well. Uh, it approves them uh, for distribution. We also have a process of internal audit and we have a process of external audit that is continually monitoring adherence to those policies. Legal and regulatory obligations. We set out in our information security policy that the organisation takes its legal and regulatory obligations seriously. And these requirements are recorded, are recorded in the legal and contractual requirements register. It goes without saying. It goes without saying that we are going to meet the requirements of the law, but we're saying it. <laughs> so we're putting it in here. Uh, legal, legal and regulatory requirements is actually a clause within the standard. More videos, more blogs on that. Um, so you can take a look at that. But basically what that is, it's a list of the laws um, 
and whether or not they apply to us. And then we have a review date, who reviewed it, and we review that on an annual basis. So people can look at the laws that apply to us. Training and awareness. Policies are made readily and easily available to all employees and third party users. A training and communication plan is in place to communicate the policies, process and concepts of information security. security. Training needs are identified and relevant training requirements are captured in the document, the competency matrix. Again, it's another template. The competency matrix just sets out all of the um, people that are involved in the information security management system. And then it says whether or not they have um, training experience within the skills that we require or whether there's a gap or whether there is a planned training in place for them. We communicate our policies and we put our policies in a place that is readily available for people. So usually on our document storage, right? It's normally on SharePoint or on OneDrive or Dropbox or wherever it may be. Um, and again, there are more detailed blogs, more detailed guides on policies and communicating them and training. But we're just pointing out here that we are making a commitment to training and awareness. Continual improvement of the management system. 27,001 is not a one and done. We are going to continually improve our management system. And here we're making that commitment. We're setting out our commitment to continual improvement. The information security management system is continually improved. The continual improvement policy, a topic specific policy, sets out the company's approach to continual improvement and there is a continual pro, uh, improvement process in place. So that is the information security policy, high level policy at a high level as a walkthrough. You can then see that we start to look at policy compliance, which I'm not going to touch on because I want to cover that in a separate video that will apply to all of the topic specific policies. So if you're going to build your information security policy from scratch, slow this video down, type in those words, get typey, typey, typey. Uh, or you can go onto hightable.io, you can download this policy for a pound um, and it's there for you. Or you can download the ISO 27001 toolkit that includes everything you need, all of the topic specific policies, more guides, more videos and more knowledge. So I am Stuart Barker. I am the ISO 27001 Ninja. That was the high level information security policy for ISO 27001 2022 edition. Until the next video, peace out.